Hi, welcome back. Uh, in this video, we'll be looking at understanding the settlement mechanism. So let me just write down the settlement mechanism. Uh, I do hope that the clearing mechanism which was discussed in the previous video is absolutely clear and we'll build it up from there. So what would exactly settlement mechanism mean? Now do remember that trading is nothing but a zero sum game. So it is a zero sum game. What this would typically mean is that if let's say all the uh, if, if let's say one clearing member is in positive after netting all the trading members uh, profits and losses then the other clearing member would be in loss right so if one is in profit the other would be in loss so a settlement mechanism would mean a mechanism whereby the profits of one clearing member are being achieved uh, and the and and the clearing member who's in losses is actually paying to the person who's in profits right so so a very simple thing would mean that if let's say this cm1 and cm2 are the two clearing houses and we have tm 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 and let's say again tm 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 whatever and what we achieve out of this is let's say after netting up the positions of all the trading members here this clearing member is in profits so this would typically mean that after netting up positions of all the trading members here this clearing member would be in losses and a settlement mechanism would mean a mechanism whereby this clearing member typically pays to this clearing member and this is actually in the most simplest terms so i've just tried to explain in simplest terms what a settlement mechanism would look like now this settlement mechanism is achieved on two bases one is on MTM basis which is mark to market which we've already studied and we'll do a little bit more in this chapter and also on the final settlement basis you can also recall that mark to market is done on a T plus one day basis that means that every single day whatever the losses are happening for this CM2 on the next very day he has to pay to CM1 right and a final settlement basis would mean that on T plus 2 day basis that is finally on the expiry day when the final settlement is done and the RBI reference rate is taken as the rate uh, for, for the final settlement then CM2 if let's say is in losses would pay to CM1 and this is then done across the board right so so that is typically what a settlement mechanism means in very very simple terms I, I've just tried to simplify and explain you through this method now uh, what we can also have a look at is uh, just going a little further what we can also look at is the MTM basis which is the mark to market right uh, now when a contract is being traded there are typically three choices that can happen so let's just have a look at that three choices one is that you bought a contract bought a contract and squared up or sold it the very same day the very same day right so that is one option that can happen the second option that is perhaps possible is and I, I, I'll just draw this a little here the second option that is possible is you there was a contract which you bought earlier and it is closed on that day so what we can say is you bought forward a contract and it was closed or squared up on that day 
right and option 3 which we can have a look at means you bought a contract but but did not square up or we can say it is carried forward or what we also call as the open interest right so a mark to market is required in all these three circumstances that you can see which is you bought a contract and sold the very same day the other is you bought forward a contract and it was closed on that day so it was a contract which you had purchased earlier and you've closed it you squared it up on that day and the second and the third is you bought a contract but did not square up right so this contract is an open interest and will be carried forward in all these three circumstances one two and three you would require the mark to market what we need to now look at is how are the calculations done in all the three circumstances so we look at it from an example viewpoint so let's let's have a look at an example where where we can actually look at how the calculations can be done and we are looking at a positive mtm so i I'll, I'll write this this example is of a positive mtm which would mean that uh, uh, the the clearing member or the trading member to whom this this data belongs is in uh, profits right so we are looking at a profit uh, mtm situation so let's just quickly make some kind of a table uh, which should have the trade details we should also have the bought or the sold criterions we should have the settlement price settle price and the MTM calculations so this is what we'll do now let's have a look at a criteria where this is bought from previous day right and let's have a let's have a look at bought and sold criteria we will make it here only now this says that bought from previous day means you bought a contract the previous day and it's it's an open interest and it was you bought 10 contract uh, 10 uh, contracts naturally of 1000 USD and the price at which you bought was 40 right so the price that which you bought was 40 now let's have a look at another example before we go to settlement price and uh, and let's say the settlement price today is 43 we'll do the mtm calculations later first we have first we're just jotting down all the uh, criteria. the second let's say is of you have traded during the day so this is traded during the day so let's say you bought something and you sold something right and what we are saying is that traded during the day you bought 20 contracts at, at 40 and you sold 10 contracts at 42 right so this naturally means that 10 contracts you squared up out of the 20 that you purchased and there would be some 10 which you are carrying forward so let's just look at that uh, condition also that 10 are being carried forward so you are saying open position or open interest right bought sold naturally you can see from the previous example here that 10 contracts of 1000 each are being carried forward and they were purchased at 40 now what's very important to understand in in this kind of example is that 
the settlement price is required because this is a contract which is being carried forward it has not been closed so what will be the mtm calculation naturally you can see that you bought at 40 it's 43 you earn a profit of 3 right and there are 10 contracts and naturally so 10 contracts of 1000 usd each so this becomes the mtm calculation for this deal now let's look at very carefully traded during the day now when when it's traded during the day please remember that there is no settlement price required for the contract which has been squared up so you can see from the example that 10 so you can see here that one contract or uh, uh, sorry 10 contracts of 1000 USD were squared up for a gain of 2 which which was which is from 42 and 40 minus right so this becomes a MTM calculation for this trade and similarly let's have a look at the third where it says this one where naturally because 10 was squared up so there are still 10 contracts left at 1000 for which you again need a settlement price and the settlement price as you can see here is 43 so the settlement price is 43 here as well and the profit or let's say the assumed profit because this is still an open position but for mark to market calculations we will we'll take it as, as the profit so so the profit is of 30 which you can, which you can see the difference is 3 43 minus 40 right so if you now calculate from a total MTM position you will see that very simply 3 6 8 8 into 10 into 1000 or or we can say 8 0 1 2 3 right so that becomes the mark to market calculation and naturally as you said this is a profit scenario where this trader particularly is in profit now what, what this would mean is maybe well, let's just take an example uh, a, a little bit of elaboration further where we are saying that now for example cm1 has this trader one who has an mtm of 80000 and let's say there's another t2 which we have not calculated but we assume did a mtm of 40000 similarly this cm2 here who has a t1 who made a loss of let's say 50000 and similarly or oh, let's keep him 3 and there's t4 who had a loss a remaining loss which will naturally be 70000 in our case right so mtm would mean mtm would mean a mechanism whereby all the all the cms will be consolidated and in t plus 1 day the settlement between from cm2 to cm1 has to happen similarly this will happen across across the trading um, uh, horizon right so this is what a mtm would mean and naturally what we also covered is the final settlement the final settlement has to happen at the t plus 2 day right i do hope settlement which is actually a very simple topic is clear now and uh, let's let's discuss the next topic very soon thank you very much see you